right, Talent of Motion Magazine, Brooks. Wish you all the best. But my next guest up tonight's a real treat from one of my favorite movies. You see him in The Warriors. He was cast for one of the gangs, The Orphans. Let's give a late night welcome for actor Apache Ramos. There you go. <laughs> Apache, what's up, Papa? How you doing, buddy? So good. I'm blessed. How's it going? It's been going well. Uh, I'm very happy in my state of life right now. Well, okay. I want to I go back. Uh -oh, I want to go, go uh, way back. 30, 37 years ago, 1979. Uh, before they had all this social media stuff, uh, huh? Those were the days. Yeah, yeah. Forget I about busted it. Busted by now. Now listen, the Warriors, how did you get casted for that part? Well, it was, it was uh, you know, and that time I came back, I uh, came to New York from Hampshire College. I wanted to be a big actor. I had my uh, theater group called Moto Theater. And I wasn't getting cast in anything. I got a lot of rejections. I was the nation. Uh, d did a lot of plays and stuff. And then my agent sent me to uh, Paramount Pictures for this movie called The Warriors. So at that time, I had an attitude. I had a black T-shirt with said Bronx and silver letters. I had shorts and a bottle of rum because I didn't care. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and there's a whole bunch of guys that look like me. It's almost like an Eminem thing. And I'm sitting there, and a lot of people looking at me, and this white guy sits next to me, and we start talking. I give him a sip. We go back and forth. He disappears. They call my name. I go in. It was Walter Hill. Oh, really? He said, you got the part, Apache. You're real. And it was blessed. It changed my life. I didn't know it then, but it did. Well, Walter Hill was uh, the director, right? Oh, man, yeah, he did a lot of things. The Rough Riders and... Uh, what, 48 Hours with Eddie Murphy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Walt is the man. Now talk about the filming in the movie, because there was a lot of chaos going on, I heard, right? Yeah, and, you know, it's funny, because Walt, uh, you know, when, when uh, the late Paul Greco, rest in peace, uh, he was the leader of the orphans, he's no longer with us, but uh, Walt didn't let us see the Warriors. We saw the script, and they didn't give us much to work with, you know? We saw the lines, and it was like, hey, man, we're like the Rodney Dangerfield of movie gangs. So... Uh, we, you know, he wouldn't let us see the Warriors, and then when we actually saw them coming down the street when we was ready to film, we were like, we're street kids, we can handle these guys. They didn't, you know, they didn't mm -hmm. impress us. So, and that, you know, that's how it started. The main chaos was when they blew up, they blew me up. It, you know, I thought it was going to be a Hollywood explosion, and, and I didn't know if I was going to be in it, and I wanted to be seen. So I saw one of the extras get real close to the car. So I got real close to the car, and I'm doing all this improv stuff. We're going to rain, you know. And Walter liked the line, we're going to rain on you, warriors. And, you know, I've said that a million times. I never get tired of saying that. We're going to rain on you, warriors. That's it. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it shook up that warriors. You know what I'm saying? I remember that. We're going to rain on you, <laughs> warriors. So I do it better than you. Eh, if you can try. <laughs> you don't get the residuals. I'll I'll f you. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so you know, they, they, they put some glue on the car, and they had a little spark thing, and I, I thought it was going to be a Hollywood explosion, so I jumped up real close, and I'm like, we're going to rain on you, worries, and then it blew up. Because that looked pretty big. It was a that real was explosion, real. so when it blows up, some people freeze, some people run. My thing was to run and laugh, and as I'm running, I'm laughing. I'm seeing all this glass coming down on people, so... The, the special effects guy, I think his name was Eddie the Torch from the West Coast, he comes out and he goes, sorry guys, he forgot to take the windshield off. Aye. But it was a lot of fun. Yeah, your buddy Thomas G. Waits was on last year. Played Thomas Fox. is a good guy. Fox, yeah. Uh, he was great. Yeah, Fox is something else. He's a, he's a great teacher. Yes. And uh, people respect him. And, you know, as we got know, you know, I'm a grandpa now. You know, I got a second one coming. I had a grandson yeah. named Hendrix. How cool is that? A guy like me, Apache, has a grandson named Hendrix. He's four now, and I got another grandchild coming. I'm, I'm praying it's a girl. But um, I lost my train of thought. I'm old. What happened? Well, your family's your pride and joy. At the my end of yeah, my family's, uh, I'm married 31 years. You know, orphans are loyal. Well, let's go down. Let's go down your career a little. Like after the war, years, you really didn't do too much acting, but you, you, you hit it pretty big in the in the music industry I, I as an A&R guy. Yep, I had a nice ten years in the record business. Uh, I had a roommate in college called Arthur Baker, who uh, said he said, let's, "You want to get in the record business?" I said, "Yeah." So I was picking and packing records in Long Island City, 45s. You know, I got to learn the labels. Then I became a national salesman. And then Arthur Baker started this label called Streetwise Records. You might be familiar with some of the groups we had then. A group called, a group from Boston came with a demo tape, and they were called New Edition. Yeah. I'm sure you heard New Edition, Candy Girl. Blew up. 
We had uh, Eartha Kid. I got to work with her. We had a group called Freeze. A E I O U was like the biggest yeah. thing. I remember the Puerto Rican parade that year. Everybody was doing their vows, learning their vows. <laughs> so. Then what about the Fat Boys as well? What was he had to do with the well, Fat Boys? Fat Boys was towards the end of my career. After after I, I signed Colonel Abrams, the music is the answer. One of the big guys in house music. Uh, the label folded, which happens with independent labels, and the management team, AMI Productions, hired me to stay with New Edition. We also brought Colonel Abrams over. We had Donny Osmond. Oh, you had Donny? I had a great story with Donny. Yeah, what is it? Donny, one time, because, you know, Donny's a really cool guy. You know, people think that, you know, he's a Mormon, blah, 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 but nah. Donny's mad cool. He, in 1985, he showed me a picture, his new 8x10s. He said, Apache, what do you think? And I said, it's nice, but 1985 was the year of crack, if we all remember. <laughs> so I put a stick. I said, let me fix it for you. So I took a stick and I put crack on his forehead, right? So I thought he was going to get upset, you know, being a Mormon and all that. He laughed his ass off. He goes, let me, let me autograph it for you, Apache. I said, okay. He said, dear Apache, thanks for last night. <laughs> so that's Donny Osmond. So I got to work with Donny and of course uh, John Waite from the Babies. Yeah, of course. Uh, I ain't missing you. Baby was great. John, yeah. And uh, I worked with Steve Michaud's company at the time, and I did that. Then when I got out of that, uh, I was uh, asked to uh, be road manager of Fat Boys, and it was like being with the Black Three Stooges, I swear to God. I never laughed so much, and I was never the slim one on tour. This time I was. So that must have been a blast. Uh, we, did, we did 50 cities in 21 days. Almost killed me because I laughed so much. <laughs> now listen, I guess at the end of that, that career, and uh, for people who don't know, Apache here is 25 years a uh, social worker, and he's actually retiring in yep. February, yep. right? Well, I, I changed it because we're getting a 4% raise from the city oh, in yeah. September, no, so I might as well get it while I'm there. But I spent uh, 25, after I left the record business, I, I was a dad, and uh, it was time to get a real job. And I said, oh, shit, I have a degree. I forgot all about it. So uh, I went into social work, and nobody wanted to work with people with full-blown AIDS. Yes. And since I was in, you know, in the garage and in the business, I had losing people. Back then, they used to call it GRID, gay-related immune deficiency. Uh -huh. And uh, so nobody wanted to work there, and I said, that's what I wanted to do. So with all, after having all these gold and platinum records, you know, I was in... Uh, my first day on the job, I, was, I had to make home visits within 48 hours, and I was stuck on an elevator and projects full of piss. And I said, this is what I want to do in my life. Well, listen, that's why you got such a great family life. Yeah, you, there you, you go. You give, and that means a lot, you know? Yeah, you have to. You have to. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my uh, 25 years in the, in the city of New York. I love my city. It's the greatest city in the world. And Now, listen, <laughs> that's almost your time. Why don't you talk about your acting? plans after retirement as you said you did a couple of independent films that, that right, I did Van Bikers 1 yes Van Bikers 2 which is a which is a funny movie it's a movie uh, dealing with real bikers in the city of New York I didn't realize as a member as a cast member of the Warriors that I had so many uh, biker friends you know I'm scared of bikes you know I wouldn't even get on it but I have so many biker friends I got to work with biker gangs in New York I also did a film called uh, Cabin in the Hood. <laughs> what about high, is, high and Tight? Ain't that well, I just, that's the one I just finished, and hopefully it will come out in, uh, next year. So I play a barber whose son uh, uh, was caught with a cop's wife, and the cop killed him, and then the cop ran off. My life is crushed. And then one day, his conscience gets to him about seven years later, and he's sitting in my barber's chair, and I'm cutting his hair, and I'm cutting his hair and I'm shaving him, and I'm shaving him, and then I got the razor on his throat, and do I cut his throat when I realize it's him? You gotta see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, which one was Angel Sazov in there with you? Oh, Angel was with me in Van Biker's Doss. If Van Biker's one wasn't tough enough, Van Biker's Doss, and Angel and I, Angel Salazar, you know him as Chi Chi from Scarface. Yeah. So Chi Chi from Scarface uh, versus Apache from the war from the orphans uh, was a pretty good scene. He played a priest and I played a cop. See, I and, can't uh, I can't pitch it. I know I know him very well. He's yeah. on the show. He's such a great guy. Keep us posted. Um, uh, I'm having a good time in Staten Island. I love the show. God bless you. All right. Oh, Apache, come back anytime. You got it. Apache Rambo. Rain on them warriors. Rain on them. Shout out to my daughter, Jazz Ray. She's having a baby. I love you, baby. Uh, Apache Ramos. We'll be seeing him real soon.